going everybody? This is John Modern and today we are going to be talking about the Santa Cruz Mega Tower CC version 2. I didn't get a chance to ride the last version of the Mega Tower, but I've been on this one for a little while since about last August, so almost a year now. So this is kind of a long-term review of this bike. Um, I have the X01 Axis Reserve build, so that's the X01, the last generation X01 Axis, not the new T-Type um, from this year. Uh, it comes with factory level suspension. This was an aftermarket bike yoke dropper. Um, Santa Cruz 35 mil rise handlebars in carbon. And yeah, let's let's jump right in. This is um, pretty progressive uh, with a few of the numbers, but not so much the reach. So I am six foot one, six foot two on a good day. And I really like an XL bike without these crazy reach numbers. I feel like so many of these bikes now you see for an XL, it's like 515, 520 mil reach. And that's just kind of insane and makes me want to size down. But then the size down is like 480. It's this huge jump. So neither one of them fit. Santa Cruz really fits for me well because their XLs are usually in that 490 to 497 range. Um, and on this bike, the reach is 495. So spot on for me as kind of an in-between large and XL rider. The head tube angle is 63.8 degrees, so pretty slack. Um, I will say it manages it quite well with the really steep seat tube angle. So the seat tube on this one is 77.8 degrees. We'll kind of jump into the climbing. It's a big bike, 165 rear, 170 front, super slack. Its intentions are not meant to be hidden. Uh, so I thought I would get on this bike, go up the mountain and kind of just, you know, get there when I get there. And that, that's somewhat the case, but really the thought that keeps coming to my head is that the geometry is just too big to fail, right? You have a 77.8 degree seat tube angle. I'm so centered and comfortable on this bike when climbing that I really, you know, I notice it's not the sprightliest, you know, super responsive, wants you to get out of the saddle and stand up and mash, but you stay seated, you're very comfortable, you're very centered on the bike. Um, I feel like I can kind of climb all day on it. This is a bike uh, I wouldn't shy away from taking on bigger rides just because it's a big, heavy bike. With that said, it isn't the most energy efficient. You can definitely feel this version of the VPP kind of suck up some of your energy. It, it just kind of vanishes, it disappears. But again, you know, you're, you're really comfortable when you're climbing, so it's not that big of a deal. The traction, I'm somebody who just leaves it open, um, leaves the compression lever open for the climbs. I don't ever lock it out. I didn't feel the need to on this bike, but I will say if you did feel the need to, or you're somebody that does take advantage of a compression lever, it's kind of far. It's way down here. This new version of the VPP, um, you know, you can certainly reach it. You don't have to be a yoga master to do so, but um, it's not like right here, like with some bikes, it's, it's pretty low. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I didn't really set any PRs on the uphill, but that's not what this bike's about. That's not what I was expecting. It was a very comfortable climber. Um, I never shied away from bigger climbs because I was bringing this bike. That was all good. Leave it in open mode, tons of traction when you need it, and not too much kind of like bouncing around. I set the suspension to Santa Cruz's recommended settings and found that once this bike absorbed a bump, be it climbing or downhill, it, it just disappeared. It has this kind of magic ability to kind of settle. It absorbs and it settles and just remains very, very calm. So we'll chat a little bit about descending, just really stable, really long, big bike. So pros when descending, you know, it is a long bike. It's got quite a long wheelbase. Um, you can you get up to speed really fast and you can stay there comfortably. Um, I always felt very centered. I felt like I had a lot of room to kind of get over the rear or get over the front when I needed to. Um, you just have this kind of big range where you're comfortable on this bike. Jumps really well. It has this magic ability to kind of be a big bike, absorb tons of trail chatter, but also be really poppy and responsive when you want it to be. And that's not something that you get from a lot of big enduro style bikes. Like you could certainly go race this, but you could also take it to a jump line flow trail and have a lot of fun. And that's kind of the bike I'm always looking for. I'm looking for something that, you know, is playful, is, you know, energetic on the descents but also can just kind of straight line really chunky lines and not get overwhelmed with them. And we'll talk kind of, you know, about some other bikes that this compares to that try for the same sort of thing, but don't really hit it the way that this one does. The negatives on the descent, if you're somewhere with lots of tight, twisty descents, 
um, and lots of really you know sharp switchbacks, I, it takes a lot of energy to turn. So all of that benefit on the straight line, I think adds up to a bike that you know just doesn't want to be super, super responsive in the tighter turns. And it can be, you're just putting a lot of body English. I, I felt like I had to get really, really low and really forward on the bike to get it to respond the way I wanted to in the tighter turns and just through the switch backs and, and any of those berms um, when I was trying to just go really fast. So there is, you know, it's not all flowers and roses. And I'd say that would be a reason I wouldn't race this bike on some tracks, just because I think a lot of these races are one in the turns as the, the saying goes. And you're not really, <laughs> this bike just doesn't favor that for whatever it's worth. Um, I took this bike to the bike park a few days, right at home in a bike park, um, have no concerns there. Went to Keystone um, here in Colorado and, and really enjoyed the bike there. Never felt overwhelmed. I never felt like I was under biked there. If anything, I felt like I was on the perfect bike for that bike park and didn't need a downhill bike. So it was really well matched there. All right, we'll chat about comparisons now. So recently I've been on a few bikes that I would compare this to. Um, the Pivot Firebird we'll talk about first. The Firebird is maybe more kind of all mountain than this one. Um, the Firebird is also a really kind of responsive, jumpy bike when you want it to be. However, you feel like you're on top of that bike. This bike you definitely feel centered inside of, and the Firebird you definitely feel a little more on top of. However, if you need a little more assistance on the climb, I feel like that DW Link does a slightly better job um, for when you're just kind of getting up and mashing out of the saddle. Uh, it's more responsive and just kind of encourages the rider to ride that way a little bit more. Whereas this bike probably would drop the Firebird on most descents. The place that I think the Firebird would have some advantages is definitely in the tighter, twistier tracks. Um, it's a little more responsive, actually a lot more responsive. It's, it's way easier to get around turns quickly when you want to just kind of lay the bike over, whip it around a berm. That bike really loves that kind of riding. Um, but straight, fast, chunky, just, I don't know, desert terrain like we have here. Uh, you know, we go to Moab a lot from the front range here in Colorado. I would much rather have this bike. Also recently was on the Nuke Proof Mega. These bikes both kind of straight line trails very similarly, but when they, they really differ, this bike likes to jump. The Nuke Proof Mega 29 does not like the air. Like certainly you can put Sam Hill on that bike and he can make it do whatever he wants. But for the average rider, um, this bike is much easier to jump, much poppier. But the Nuke Proof probably straight lines chunky trail a little bit better and is certainly way more responsive in the turns. The Nuke Proof, I, I'd say if I was an enduro racer out of the three bikes we're talking about right now, I would probably go with the Nuke Proof because it's fast, it absorbs trail chatter really, really well. I was also on a coil shock on that bike. Um, and it just is very intuitive. You start thinking of the turn that you're gonna make and the bike's already going that way. Um, almost like some of these uh, mullets out here these days, it almost kind of behaves that way. And I'm not sure, I didn't dive into the geometry of that bike too, too much. So I'm not sure what it is about that bike, but really encourages fast turns and high speed. Um, whereas this bike, loves high speed on straight trails and loves to jump. So if you're somebody who has a lot of kind of big, chunky, straight line trails, you enjoy going to the bike park, you love a trail like whole enchilada, porcupine rim out in Moab, um, this bike is perfect. Um, real quick, just on components and value, I've really liked the X01 Axis drivetrain. Um, I've got the newer T-type version on a new bike and it's an upgrade, is it? necessary no is it going to be what you're forced to buy soon because it's going to be on bikes instead of this yes so take that for what it's worth so it's probably not worth going too much into the drivetrain that acted well really the fox 38 is the fork of my choice that's my choice right now uh, above all other forks above the zeb above all ends um, anything else i've been on recently i think the fox is just for me i can set it up easier and it just works well in all conditions i swapped out the dropper this is a bike yoke and it's the best dropper. It's super expensive, but definitely the best dropper out there. Um, the carbon reserve wheel is definitely worth mentioning. I broke this wheel in half. It just snapped and reserve had me a wheel in I think seven working days and that was awesome. So I had my trail kind of light trail duty bike that I was riding in the meantime. 
And before I knew it, there was a new wheel at my door. And that was a, a really easy process with Reserve. They responded to my email same day. Huge shout out to Reserve and their customer support team because I don't know, sometimes you buy these and you're like, well, is the warranty, you know, how long is it gonna take? What's my downtime? And it really wasn't much downtime at all. So that was awesome. Cockpit handlebars. I like the Santa Cruz stuff. Um, 35 mil rise, definitely pretty tall on a bike that already has a lot of stack and a lot of height, but feels really comfortable in the steep. So there's always a pro and a con and handlebars, cockpit stuff. People swap that out anyway, so not really worth talking about too much. From a value perspective, Santa Cruz is not a good value. If you want a Santa Cruz, you have to pay for a Santa Cruz, but there's no sense in talking to you about how, you know, this bike is a good bang for the buck because quite frankly, you can get other bikes for much cheaper um, that aren't a Santa Cruz. And so you're not going to have that, but yeah, from a value perspective, I don't know, I could talk to you about 10 other bikes that are probably better spec for the, for way less money, but they're not the Santa Cruz. So if you want a Santa Cruz, you gotta kind of pay to play. That's the way they've been set up for a while now. And that's just the deal. Who's this bike for? This bike is for, I think I kind of said it already. So if this is redundant, I apologize. It's for people who have kind of long, straight, chunky trails that enjoy jumping, that enjoy turning small trail features into jumps, but they still want like a big bike. Normally that's a trait I feel like you find with like a smaller bike, but I can still find little features with this bike that maybe my trail bike would turn into a big jump or a big pop, but the Santa Cruz Mega Tower still enjoys those. Um, it just doesn't enjoy turning super fast. So again, if you're somebody with a lot of trails that are just tight turns everywhere, I don't know, maybe look at the Nomad. Uh, the mullet setup probably lets that bike turn a lot quicker from what I read. Um, maybe look at a different kind of more all mountain bike, but if you're riding bigger trails, you don't mind pedaling a big bike up to the top um, and you're somebody who just wants to sit and spin, this bike's awesome. I mean, I don't keep bikes very long. This, this bike's been in my garage for about a year now. So that kind of, that says a lot. Yeah, that about wraps it up. If I missed anything, drop a comment below, um, shoot me a direct message, whatever. I'll get back to you. I get back to everybody. Um, still pretty new with this. So open to any and all feedback. And yeah, thanks for watching.